enjoy some be glad in it hallelujah somebody praise the lord this is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it for that Tuesday, everyone welcome to the Vangelist of christ mission church bible study and we are about to start with one of my music in one of my albums amen let's go <laughs> Sufficient for us, Lord. And the God of peace will crush Satan down. Satan, that's what it is. On Zachariah 32. The Lord will be with me. And now I will be with you. And right now I will be with you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the call of his name, may we be shabbat. And every time we are in the name of God, we are in the name of God. I rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will sing a band of music. 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 Si basi a ye Jesus ke e benu e master Jesus azo abai mada o sinenda ke mo e bubu duwa na misu e benu e na naga a chamen ke kai teluwa a jamma nenda ke mo e bubu duwa na misu e benu e na naga a chamen ke kai teluwa na bamba. Ibasaye Jesus Nike, Ebenwe Master Jesus, Azo Abai Mada. Ose Ebubu Duwe Na Misu, Ebenwe Na Naga, Achane Mika Kai Teriwa. Ganda Setan, Up Up Jesus, Ganda Setan. You can show me to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. The 
Kwesu na bamba nefu Ipasa ye jezu like Edenwe master Jesus Ozo abaye maga Kwesu na bamba nefu Ipasa ye jezu like Edenwe master Jesus Ozo abaye maga Amen. And this end up our music for our Tuesday Bible study. And to God be all the glory. I'll take it back a little bit because I forgot to do that last Tuesday because we have to go back there and play it at the end. So today I'm up and doing and I thank God. My brothers and sisters, we're going to go in now, dive into our Bible study. We're still in Pericope, Second Kings. Chapter, we're going to start with chapter 9 and on going to chapter 10. And the title today is Shamanites and Jew. And Jew. Jew had the basic qualities that could have made him a great, a great success from a human perspective. In fact, he was successful. In fact, he was a successful king. His family ruled the northern kingdom longer than any other. He was used by God as an instrument of punishment to help evil de uh, dynasties. And he fairly attacked by worship. He became, he, he, he came, he came close to being God's guide kind of king, but he recklessly went beyond, beyond God's command and failed to follow through on the obedient action that began his reign. Within sight of victory, he settled for mediocrity. Je Je Jehu was a man of immediate action but without ultimate purpose. His kingdom moved but his destination was unclear. He eliminated one form of idolatry by, by worship only to uphold another by continuing to worship the golden calves Jeroboam had set up. He could have accomplished much for God if he had been obedient. God keep on telling us to be obedient. If he has been obedient to who made him king, which is God. Every time we forget where we start from, every time we start where we're coming from, we got a problem of pride and the problem of disobedience. Even when he was carrying out God's direction, Jehu's style showed he was one full aware of who was directing him. As he did with Jehu, God gives each person strength and ability that will find their greatest usefulness only under his control. Outside that control, my brothers and sisters, however, they don't accomplish what the what what uh, they, they could and often become tools for evil. One way to make sure this does not happen to you, to you all over the world, one way to make sure this does not happen is to tell God of your willingness, of our willingness to be under his control. To beg for it, to pray for it constant, constantly, continuously, and commit ourselves to God's guidance, God teaching our God path, and do what God called us to do. With His presence in your life, your natural strength and ability will be used to their greatest potential for the greatest good. Rewind, Joy. I say, with God, with God presence in your life, with Jesus Christ presence in your life, with Holy Spirit presence in your life, my brothers and sisters, your natural strength strength and ability will be used to their greatest potential for the greatest for the great uh, for the um, for the greatest good the strength Stre uh, strength and accomplishment took the throne from her family and destroyed his evil influence founded the uh, longest lived dynasty of the northern kingdom was anointed by Elijah and confirmed by Elisha destroyed by worship Weakness and mistake had a reckless outlook on life that made him bold and proud to error. Worship Jerob, uh, 
golden calves was devoted to God only to the point that obedience served his own interests. It was a selfish, selfish king. Lesson from his life, we should learn from the life of Jehu is very committed commitment needs control because it can result in recklessness whenever you are doing something you should be controlled you should know who you are answering to because that might end up like the whole recklessness obedience involves both action and direction every time you're being obedient it involves both action and direction direction two of them cannot go at each other they are they are together Vital statistics where the Northern Kingdom of Israel occupation com uh, commander in the army of Jerusalem, King of Israel, relative, grandfather, nation, father, Joseph, son, Joseph, contemporaries, Elijah, Elisha, Ahab, Jerub uh, Jezebel, Jeroboam, and Azira. The key verse of, uh, of this is uh, at yet Jerusalem was not careful to keep the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart, he did not turn away from the sins of the Jeroboam, which he had caused Israel to commit, in Second Kings 10.31. Tracking the coal into the belt made it easier to run. Elijah had prophesied that many people would be killed when Jero become king. Let's read that quickly. Uh, Pericope, Second Kings chapter 9. The prophet Elijah summoned a man from the company of the prophet and said to him, Track your cloak into your belt, take this flash, flask of oil with you, and go to Renel Ramadat Gilead, where you get there, look for Jerusalem, son of Jezebel, the son of Nesham, to go to him, get him away, get him away from his companion, and take him into an inner room, then take then take the flask and pour the oil on his head and declare, this is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and run. Don't delay. So the young man, you know, did, this, did that. Elijah had prophesied that many people will be killed when Jerusalem uh, become king. Thus, Elisha advised the young prophet to get out of the area as soon as he delivered his message before the slaughter began. Jerome, Jerome Ashon seemed ash as he hunted down relatives and friends of Ahab, but on uncheck bow worship was destroying the nation. If Israel was to survive, the followers of Ba had to be eliminated. God keep on telling us anything that causes us sin, we should eliminate it. Jerome fulfilled the need of the house of the hour justice. Elisha's statement fulfilled Elijah's prophets made. 20 years earlier, all of Ahab's family will be killed. Jezebel, dead, predicted by Elijah, is described in chapter 9, 30, 37. Ahab's dynasty will end as, as had those of Jeroboam and Bashar. And ba and Bashar. Uh, Ajaya, Ajaya had prophesied the end of Jeroboam's dynasty, and this was fulfilled by Basha, the prophet Jerum, not king. Jerum then foretold the end of Basha's family, and this too was fulfilled. The end of Ahab's family, therefore, was certain. Elijah had predicted pre, uh, uh, it, and God brought it to pass. The one thing you have got to understand in life, everything God has spoken to always come to pass. It might delay, but delay is not denial. It might tarry, but it will come to pass. The horseman met Jeru and asked if he can make if he if he came in peace. But Jeru responded, What do you have to do with peace? Peace properly understood comes from God. It is not genuine aspect. Uh, 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 it's not genuine, except when rooted in the belief in God's role for for him. Jeru knew the man represented the uh, disobedient. Uh, the represented a disobedient, wicked king. Don't seek peace and friendship with those who are enemies of good and the truth. Lasting peace can come only from knowing God who gives it to us. Okay? Jerome of Israel was wicked like, like his father and mother, Ahab and Jezebel. Therefore, his body was thrown into the field that his parents had unlawfully taken from Naboth. 
the previous owner because he will not sell his vineyard which he had wanted for a garden. Remember what happened during that time? Jezebel had to take it from him and kill him. Little did he have know that it will become a burial plot for his sons. Mm. We should be careful what we do because our children suffer what we, what we do too. Why did Jezebel refer to the Zemri? Zemri. Zemri was an army commander who some 40 years earlier had killed Ella and then had declared himself king of, of Israel. Jezebel was ac uh, uh, accusing Jerom of trying the same treasury. Jezebel's call, feet and, and hands were all that remained of her, of her evil life. No power, no money, no prestige, no loyal, no firm, no family, no spiritual heritage. In the end, her life, luxury and treasury and wickedness amounted to nothing. Be careful what you do because your end might be like Jezebel, even worse. Power, health, power, health, wealth may make you feel as if you can live forever as if you got the whole world in your hand, as if you are God of your generation, of your God of yourself, be careful because that's pride that devil will give you. But that stretches every one of all external security. And when death comes, every external security, you don't have it. The time to set your life's course, my brothers and sisters, is now. Set your life course right now. This is the time. You cannot miss it. This is the time to set your life because if you don't, the time to set your life course to do right unto, unto yourself, to do right unto God, to do right unto men and women, to do right unto human beings. Be careful. While you still have time, this is the right time, the time to set your life course is now while you still have the time. And before your heart becomes adding like Jezebel, the end will soon will soon be uh, the hand will come soon enough this fulfill elijah's prophecy that not one of ahab male descendants will survive in this zeal jerome went far beyond the lost command with his blood bath the prophet hosea later announced punishment upon jerome dynasty for this senseless slaughter many times in history religions religions people have missed faith with personal ambition, power, and cruelty, and wickedness without God's consent or, or blessing. To use God or the Bible to condone oppression is wrong. To uh, uh, condone wickedness, killing people, oppressing people is wrong. When people attack Christianity because of atrocity that Christians carried out to see that these men and women were using faith to their own political ends, not following Christ. Jenahab was a man Jenahab was a man who like Jerob was zealous in following God Jenahab however demonstrated his zeal by separating himself and his family from the materialistic idol worshipping culture he founded a group called the, the Rabakats named after his father Rekha who strove who strove to keep their lives Pure by living apart from society's pressure and temptation. Jeremiah 35. Jeremiah 35 gives us an example of their direction to God. Because of their dedication, God promised that they will always have a descendant who will worship him, who will worship him. And, and that's God for you. God always loves good things. And every time you obey God to a place of giving up your life, selflessly god will always show up let's read chapter 10 verse 1 now there there were a samarian 70 sons of the house of ahab so jeru wrote the letters and sent them to samaria to official jeru to the elders and the guidance of ahab children he said as soon as this letter reaches you since your master's son are with you and your chariot and horses a fortified city weapons Choose the best and most worthy of your master's son and set him on his father's throne. Then fight for your master's house. But, but they were terrified and said, If two kings will not resist him, how can we? You know, so um, the palace administrator, the city governor, the elders and the guidance uh, sent this message to Jerome. 
We are your servant and we will do nothing you say. We will not appoint anyone as king. You do not you do whatever you do whatever you do you think best. Israel was supposed to be a intolerant of any religion. They are supposed to be a religion that serve only one God. Intolerant of any religion that did not worship true God. Every time any religion does not worship true God, Israel does not have to be part, part of it, partake in it, or even go close to it at all, not to talk of practicing it. The religions of surrounding nations were evil and corrupt. Remember, that's why God told them in the books uh, that we just finished, uh, uh, the book of uh, Numbers and uh, Deuteronomy, that they should get rid of all these people, everything in it, so that they, to avoid their being corrupt by those sin. The religions of surrounding nations were evil and corrupt. They were designed to destroy life, not uphold it. Israel was God's. Israel was God's special nation, remember, choosing to be an example of what was right, not what was wrong. And not paganism, not war, not wickedness, not war, but what was right. But Israel kings, priests, and elders and leaders first tolerated, then incorporated, incorporated surrounding pagan beliefs, and those become apathetic, uh, apathetic to God's way. They don't want to do God's way; they just want to be wicked. We are to be completely intolerant, intolerant in anything. We are to be uh, completely intolerant of sin and remove it from our lives, however we can do it. We should be tolerant of people who hold different, different views, but we should not condole beliefs or practice that lead people away from God's standards of living. Be careful about that. Why did Jehoram Je 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 destroy the idols, bar, but not the golden cows in Bethel and Dan? I'm glad he has. Jerome's motive may have been more political than spiritual. He doesn't know, he, he, and he must be more proud. He's just proud of himself. He doesn't know what to do with his life because he's just wicked. So we have to be careful when we do stuff like that. We need to be careful what, uh, what is happening to our life at a time. Because when we don't do that, things will happen and we, we go into doing things of not uh, not of God, so when we when we are doing all this, my computer don't do this to me. Okay. Hmm. All right. So number one, if Jerome had destroyed the golden calves, his people would have traveled to the temple in the Jerusalem, in the rival uh, southern kingdom and worshipped there, which is why Jeroboam set them up in the first place. Number two, Baal worship was associated with the dynasty of Ahab, so it was politically adventurous to destroy Baal. The golden cows, on the other hand, had a longer history in the anti corn and the anti god, which is a god, small god. But the golden cows were thought by many to be visible representation of God Himself, even though God's law stated clearly that such worship was idolatrous. Like Jerome, it is easy for us to denounce the sins of others while excusing sins in our own life. Wow. Jerome did much of what the Lord told him to, but he did not obey him with all his heart. We have to obey God with all our heart. He had become God's instrument of carrying out justice, but he did not become God's servant. As a result, he gave only lip service to God while permitting the worship of, of, of the golden cliffs checking the condition of your heart towards God, we can be very active in our work for God and still not give the heart felt obedience is desire. We have to be careful with that. Now, after we do our Bible study every Tuesday, uh, we go and pray three, three prayer points. 
Let's go. The first prayer point, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. God, thank you for waking us up this morning. God, thank you for waking us up this morning. And God, do not let us be like Jerome. Do not let us be like uh, this king in Israel. Take off uh, every sin in us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. But I take off every sin in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Masuke Lebo Sikalaba Sindia. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and take away everything that not to sin, any sin at all, small, invisible, take it away from us in the mighty name of Jesus, all the virtues of Christ, Father, take all our sin out of our life. Masuke Lebo Salatia, La Tatalaba Sikileba Shindia. And number two, God, thank you for letting us touch, letting me touch and see another day. Father, we thank you for letting us see another day. Father, uh, number two, number one prayer is God. Take away anything sin in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. And number two prayer, Father, help us to obey your command in the mighty name of Jesus and do right unto you. Father, help us to obey your command and do right unto you. Father, help us to obey your command and do your right in the mighty name of Jesus. And the third one, thank you, God, for guiding us to do right, uh, to guiding me to the right path. Father, thank you for guiding us to the right path in the mighty name of Jesus. Masuke. Father, thank you for guiding us, guiding us to the right path in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for teaching us a way. Thank you for guiding us to wrap in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Masuke Lebo Saladia. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Laka Kaka, Sele Kele Labatata, Yibobo Sende Laka Laba. Father, thank you for guiding us, guiding me to the right path. Thank you for guiding all the vassals of Christ, Nation Church, to the right path. Thank you for guiding everyone online to the right path to do right unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. I will finish our set. The first one prayer is, Father, thank you for waking us up and thank you and thank Take away every sin out of us, every type of sin, knowingly or knowingly. Take it out of us in Jesus' name. God, uh, 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 I, 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 I pray for number two. I pray for be obedient, help us to obey you and keep your command. Help us to obey you and keep your command in the mighty name of Jesus. And number three, God, thank you for guiding us, guiding me and guiding us to the right path in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, my brothers and sisters, this end of our Bible study. Tuesday Bible study, we start at 10 o'clock every uh, Tuesday at 10 o'clock U.S., uh, 4 p.m. Nigeria, and 3 p.m. Europe. I will finish as I love you, but God loves you more. My name again is Reverend Dr. Joy Angulin Wachuku, out in James, the flower of God, the mad piece of God, the cloth of God, the celebrity of Jesus. I am here to serve God and serve his people. May God continue to bless you all. Virtue Org, Virtue Org, Amen, and a good handshake. Thank you so much for coming, and I appreciate all of you that have come to this Bible study today. And let's put our music that will end the Bible study. Amen. <laughs> Right now, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So, my brothers and sisters, this end up our Bible study for today. God bless you. Amen. So, thank you, God. Lift your name, God. Amen. God bless you. Amen.